Let's now conclude this episode by discussing how MPEG Dash operates in a real world environment and how latency can be reduced even further. The first item to consider is the network between the packager and the player, which always introduces a variation of delay, also known as network jitter. In our case study, and in an ideal world, the player should finish receiving the segment at every 6 seconds time interval, or 1 second in the case of chunks. However, since these pieces of data are sent over an unmanaged network, the delivery time varies randomly, forcing the player to increase its buffer size in order to absorb these delay variations. More broadly speaking, latency tends to increase along with the variation of delay. For instance, if the network were to introduce a delay variation of one second, the player would then need to add this one second to its media buffer. It does so in order to prevent a worst case scenario where one of the segments or chunks would arrive one second after the scheduled time. Let's now briefly talk about segment and chunk duration that are used out there. Yeah, while HLS recommends six second segments and MPEG Dash does not recommend anything, there is a tendency nowadays to use a shorter duration of 4 to 2 seconds. The goal being to lower latency without having to actually change the entire workflow to support that low latency. In terms of chunking, you can see some implementation using 500 milliseconds, but there is no set rule for how many frames are included in each chunk. It can be as small as one single frame. To conclude this episode, let's touch on an important aspect of HTTP adaptive streaming, and particularly the low latency flavor of it. Looking more closely at the entire distribution chain, we realize that the player is key in supplying the best latency to the viewer, considering that most of the message for orchestration is driven by the player itself via HTTP GET requests. In this section, we'll get a brief sense of how player's implementation may become a key differentiator in preserving a decent quality of experience, all the while providing a low latency program. Low Latency Dash has rolled out a great set of tools to lower latency on both the packaging and the playback side. But this new technology brings with it challenges that have yet to be resolved. One of them is bandwidth estimation, that is, the process to choose the correct video profile in accordance with the available bandwidth. This process is at the heart of the adaptive bitrate technology. In the case of traditional Dash, the client gets the entire segment through a single HTTP transfer at a rate called the line rate. This means the data is received at the fastest possible TCP rate that the client's connection can offer. The client can then deduct the available bandwidth by measuring the amount of data being received and dividing it by the amount of time it took to receive it. For example, if the client receives a segment that is 600 kilobytes in size and that one second elapsed from the first byte to the last byte of the payload, the estimated available bandwidth becomes 4.8 megabit per second. In the case of low latency dash and chunk transfer encoding, the elapsed time between the first and the last byte received now depends upon the rate at which the packager creates the segment in full. In our example, it will always take around 6 seconds for the packager to transmit the full segment and for the client to receive it. This leads the client to incorrectly estimate the bandwidth at around 800 kilobit per second, making it unable to detect any bandwidth fluctuation and continuously requesting the same video profile, whichever the bandwidth is. Solutions are being researched and developed to mitigate this, which we will without a doubt address in a later episode. However, it is important to understand the challenges that this chunking mechanism poses to the bitrate adaptation process. Other complexities and challenges for the player side are related to the network, usually on the last mile delivery. So in normal network conditions, which means with no network congestion, the player will fill up its buffer at playback startup. Then its playhead, which is the position in the content where it decodes and displays the video, is at a certain distance from the player's live edge. That interval is the player buffer. So for example, 3 seconds. So let me just clarify that the player live edge I'm referring to is from the player's perspective and not the live edge from the camera's point of view. 
So when the network conditions are good, some players have implemented a mechanism to get closer to the live edge by simply speeding up slightly the playback. But just be reassured that it's imperceptible to the naked eye and ears. And then when the network conditions deteriorate, some players can slow down in order to increase the amount of data in their buffer. The loose players will get farther from the live edge, but will be able to absorb any possible network degradation, resulting ultimately in a good playback experience. So meaning, you know, without that buffer spinner that, that I think we've all experienced. The playback rate adjustment implemented by some players is a useful tool or a technology for players to actually alter the latency. We are now reaching the end of this episode dedicated to Low Latency MPEG Dash. Thank you, Yannick, for sharing your expertise with us. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, Clément. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Happy learning. <laughs>